welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us for the live or replay for Life with Lily. In this episode, we are talking about the original wound and we have Janice with us and she is going to share a lot of information and also her personal story. So please join me in welcoming her and her wonderful co-host. <laughs> Hi everyone. Hi Lily. So Thank you so much for being here for you and your co-host. As most of the viewers know, co-hosts are always welcome. A lot of them back up their butts to the camera in the middle. So if that happens, no shame. It happens with all of them. So can you tell us a little bit about you and why the original wound is so important, like so integral to your life and your growth? Okay. So first of all, um, I am born in Hawaii. So and I, this is where I'm currently living. And um, so for me, like, why is it ingrained so much in that? Well, this is a my karmic life lesson that I came in here to learn from. Mm -hmm. So because of that, I, I had the mother room from when I was born, but not knowing that's what it was until like, later on in my journey in my life as I started to unravel the only thing that I was just you know what I wanted was I didn't want to be like my mother <laughs> that, that was my my <laughs> and that's it you know what I mean and, and everything else, <laughs> right <laughs> I love it so um can you go into the thing that I always tell my clients and my viewers is that there are many different schools of thoughts. The universe is ever expanding and everything like that, which means that a lot of people have differing views about things like past lives and things like the original wound. So in your own words, can you explain what the original wound is? Yes. So the original wound is a mother wound, which is a generational karmic wound that's been passed down through my lineage. Mm -hmm. So my mother has it, my grandmother has it. So it's just mm -hmm. been repeated it down. And what the original wound is, it's not feeling your authentic self. It's, it's, yep. It leads to, um, for me, it's a self-worth. Mm -hmm. of who you are. Yeah. And, and in this school of thought, the one that you're talking about has a lot to do with like ancestral trauma, that, that linkage that, um, there's a, there's a school of thought that is when you heal, you heal seven generations back and seven generations forward. So I feel like that's also integrated into the original wound and the school of thought that I follow is that it could be an original mother or father wound. And when you're born, that's what you it's the gift that you get <laughs> and and i think that's important when you shift your mindset with the original wound because there is so much misinformation about it everyone thinks it is evil and not everyone but it, it has this bad rap of being evil and life ruining and because you have this wound now you can't fill in the blank to anything that you ever wanted in your entire life it's done now and I think that that is just uh, bullshit. And it's, it is a profound lack of self. It is the weight and burden of your ancestors' mistakes and their lack of willingness to learn. Yeah, is it's unhealed trauma. trauma. Exactly. And I have found that it compounds through the generations. And so it's like, if it's this, but then it didn't hit, and now it's this and this. And so honestly, by the time the person who takes on the responsibility and who has the courage to do that, decide, makes that decision, it's like this big. It's like sitting on you. It's not like, oh, this is something that I can walk around. It's like, I can't move and this sucks. No. It follows you everywhere, man. It, it's like, it's just constantly there until you yeah. wake up to it and starts to shift that. Like, as I said, like, I wasn't aware of this. I just thought that I just had like these, like my mom and I always fought all the time. And I just thought that was just normal, yeah. you know, I didn't like her at times, but I always loved her, you know, mm -hmm. and there was times that I didn't want to be around her. And I just thought that was normal. 
But it was like until I had my own child and then I wanted to do things differently. And, you know, then I got into this work that where I found like, oh, this shit is deeper. <laughs> yes. And so um, several people are joining us for the live. So everyone who's joining us, thank you so much. Make sure the comments are live. Like you can comment as we're going this. Raven Rising and Nora have already started commenting. If you guys have questions for either of us about the original wound or how we deal with it, please let us know. Uh, if you want to see more of this, make sure to share it so that we're getting the word out. We would love to help as many people as possible. So with the original wound, I think what a lot of people don't understand. So let's, I, I, the father wound is real, but let's focus on the mother wound because it's, it's, you're the guest and that's what you had, but it touches every aspect of a person's life. I have found it's not just well, it affects the, the the womanly part, the feminine part. It it affects your relationship with your mother. It's like, no, it affects your work. It affects, affects money, your work, your health, your everything. Your, I have found that it affects clothing choices. Like it truly can touch anything. The food you eat, what food you resonate with can all be affected by this original wound. Now, most people, if we are being honest, because past generations were not always good at healing, most people do have an original wound of some kind. Oh, yeah. And there's there's a lot of difference between the original mother and the original father wound. So what do you think is the main difference? Like the biggest, like, oh, yeah, that one's that one, that one's that one. Well, the similar difference with they both lead to is always going to be worthiness. It's always going to be not enoughness. But the distinction between the two is the female wound is not being able to fully express herself or being safe in her body. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then the masculine one is not being able to provide and support mm -hmm. and not mm -hmm. being a, a safe container for her. Yes. And yes. so... Those are the two main, which I have the karmic womb of the mother born with, but I also had to heal the karmic womb with my father as well, because yes. they go hand in hand, because my mother is a very strong woman, which she had to be because of her trauma. So she had to be in her masculine. Yes. Because of all of that, you know, So she, and she didn't know any other way. So that was the karmic wound that was passed down with me because my whole family, it comes from a lineage of strong warrior women. Yes. And because of that, they had to be strong. So yeah. I thought I had to be that way. Therefore, I wasn't allowed to express myself. I wasn't mm -hmm. allowed to be who I who I wanted to be, what how I thought, how I felt. Mm -hmm. I was disconnected with my body and my emotions. I didn't feel safe. Yes. Um, I was a people pleaser and I second guessed myself a lot. I had a lot of self-doubt. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so that kind of like was the stem, you know, it was because my mother and my aunt and my generations before me had yeah. to be in their masculine. Mm -hmm. I find that people with a mother wound don't acknowledge or have the capacity to discover their life's purpose. Mm -hmm. Like they're so lost in what they should do. So for me, my mother wound was a little bit different than yours. And people can have, like we said, people can have a mother and father wound, but you, we're talking about the original one. The original one is either mother, father, and then you get to deal with the side dish later. But so I found out with mine, it was the exact opposite of yours. We didn't have warrior women. We did not have bad bitches. We had very submissive, very, you will give up your health, your happiness, your body, to the family and ultimately your husband. And that was something like, um, that was really hard for me to understand as a very strong-willed child. And it just didn't feel right. And so that was something for me that it was, if you are not serving someone, you do not have worth. Oh yeah. And, and that was mine. And it was very, for me, it was heartbreaking because it was like, this is the position that you are supposed to hold. And it's a beautiful position, wife, mother, all of those wonderful archetypes, but it was an obligation and it, okay. it twisted everything. And it really changed how I felt about myself. Um, I started 
when I tell people no lie, my inner clock that, you know, you're getting too old for babies started ticking at 15. Yeah. I, at 15, I was like, this is, this is a thing. Right. And everyone's around me like, you are a psycho. And now at 36, I'm like, mm, that was so mother wound, isn't it? Oh, that yeah. it's like, Yep, you're at an age where you could nurture. You're not fully developed yet, but that's okay. You can still cook and clean. Yep. And I think, so it, it can manifest a bunch of different ways. It can manifest yeah. as the warrior woman, as you have to not only exist as the vessel, but fill it like you, like, like your ancestors had to. But then mine was to be an empty vessel, was to truly be devoid of any worth unless someone filled it. Oh yeah, I had the same one too. And so I I actually had that one too. Yeah. yeah. And it's, because my mom has that too. Like yeah. she her her thing is about, you know, being needed mm -hmm. and being, you know, for everyone else than mm -hmm. herself. Yes. And so therefore I would be the people pleaser of mm -hmm. fulfilling everyone needs and wishes besides my own. Yes. Yes. Raven Rising says, my mom was what I considered to be a tiger mom. Uh, wants me to make money so she can buy a house at 25 now. Definitely see how it affected my childhood. Yeah, this is, so we deal with this as an adult. And, but this does affect our childhood. This does change the, the way we play house and everything like that. And I think it's important for a lot of people to understand and realize that while this did affect your childhood, it doesn't have to ruin it. It doesn't have to, like, your life is full and beautiful. And now that you're an adult and can see the wound, now you can heal from it. And I think that's incredibly powerful for people. Uh, uh, grieve. Please grieve. Like, grieve the loss of certain aspects of your life, of certain situations and experiences that you couldn't have. 100% grieve. But do not get bitter or sullen that you missed out on something because you're given, this is going to sound really fucked up, but everyone go with me on this. You are given the gift of understanding. You are given the gift of self-awareness to heal. That's awesome. It sucks. You got a wound, but that's awesome. So be, be aware of that as you heal. So how long did it take you to heal your original wound? Cause it's a process. It's not an overnight thing. As much as people want to say, I journaled and cried and ate chocolate. Like, it's no. more than that. <laughs> it's not true. How? It's so much more than that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a journey. <laughs> it's definitely a journey. I would say, I want to say about in the last solid three years, mm -hmm. I would say my inner child, who I used to be, my identity and who I was yes. is completely different than who I am. And my relationship with my mother and I are is night and day, yes. night and day. Like, I can't even believe I even had that experience with her, mm -hmm. to be honest. Yeah. And it, we talk differently with you. We commute. Our communication is so much um, healthier. She's actually now able to express herself and her emotions and be oh. heard yeah you know so um so i know so it took a long time i've been doing since i i started my energy work and my healing work it was in 2010 so mm -hmm. about 10 roughly but i know now it will never go back the same because it's healed it's done yeah because i know my relationship with my mom and i are complete as i said completely different i think my mom's now open and being able to express herself Something mm -hmm. that she's never done before. And I've just yeah. seen her do like 180 and we were doing it separately on our mm -hmm. own thing, mm -hmm. you know, not knowing. But the thing yeah. is, is, like when you do the work on yourself, mm -hmm. it transpires to everyone else around you, even though you don't know what's going to happen. It, you know, you're just working on you, but it does. It does affect everyone. It's even affected my son and my relationship with my child. Mm hmm. As well as like my relationship with my mother now, like mm -hmm. as someone, 
someone said, oh, that's your mom. And I was like, yes, she's, oh, I love her. I go, I know me too. And I just started crying because I know the journey that we went through to get to where we are. Yes. And I, I love that. So it's not an overnight process. So from the time that we like awaken and acknowledge our wound and figure out like where it comes from and everything, it takes years. That is not discouraging. That again is a journey and it's awesome, which means that there is an end of the tunnel. But at the same time, like when I look at my journey and you look at your three years, would you trade it for anything? Like it took so long or is it like it only took three years to fix fix centuries of trauma because remember seven generations back minimum that it only took three years to fix centuries of trauma oh my god that is not bad at all that's a deal that's a steal right there mm -hmm. so i think people need to understand as they're like oh my gosh this is such a big commitment yes it is a huge commitment to yourself do you feel worthy to do that and if not you need to schedule with one of us so that we can discuss it with you because yeah. that's what we do. We both are practitioners and this is what we do for our career is to help people with these wounds. And when people ask, well, what do you do? Well, if you don't know if you have a mother or father wound, you schedule a session. I don't know where to start. You schedule a session. I don't know how to take the next step. Even if you've started and now you've just stalled, you schedule a session. And the reason I say schedule a session, as uh, my viewers who watch know that I always give like a list of resources. This one is done in sessions because there is so much misinformation about it. And because it is so entangled in like 50 million different threads to your existence, you, in my professional opinion, you should have a practitioner at least supporting you on this journey, if not holding your hand. Absolutely. And and then you go so deep and so wide and things just come up and you want to be able to go through them without being stuck in it. Mm -hmm. So you get through it, get past it, because a lot of the question I get, and you probably get this too, Ali, mm -hmm. when is this ever going to stop? Yep. <laughs> when, when am I done with this? Yep. You no. Know? And, and here's the answer. Here's the answer for everyone listening. <laughs> when you take the actionable steps to heal. That's it. It's on you. It is not on the universe. It is not on your ancestors for not healing. It is not on anybody else. It's you. And that is awesome. Again, it's empowering. You have the power to heal an original wound that lasted centuries. How is that not the most comforting feeling that you can heal through this process of self-discovery? And so I think what a lot of people uh, nowadays with our very like drive through quickie tick tock 60 seconds only are like, but I just want to take a pill. I've had countless clients say, I wish there was a pill. And I go, that breaks my heart. I hope there is never a pill. There is no shortcut to spiritual awakening. There is no shortcut to true healing. And those who want to find it, honor and blessings, you are not my clients. My clients come in and they're like, let's do it. I want to get it. And it's like, all right, let's, let's do it. And that is something that I think is really important that we can get lots of like snippets from TikTok and quick drive through stuff. But to do the actual meaty work that you're going to change your life over takes years. Mine took years. Yours took years. And we were spiritually awakened when we started. Could you imagine doing this and like doing your spiritual awakening at the same time, like overlapping them? That's a lot of work. Please don't think you have to do it alone. You're not alone. We bitches, we went through it. We know the way out. We will hold your hand and talk sweetly to you while shaking a pom-pom. We, we will 100% want to be there with you because it's such a magical experience. Like, I don't know about you, but I look back at mine and like, I cringe at a lot of the toxic things I did because of the original wound. And I look at the whole process and I'm like, but that was magical. A little fucked up, but super magic. Cause we're all toxic. All right. We all do stupid stuff on our healing journey. And, but I mean, it is, I love seeing, how about you? Do you, 
one of my favorite parts is seeing my clients change and grow and heal. And so is that, can you relate to that? Or is that like, oh no, I like them to do it behind closed doors. Cause that's valid too. <laughs> oh yeah. No, I love, I love working with them because I know the pain that they're going through. And I know because I know it, I can help them get through it even faster. I can collapse yes. time for them. Yes. Because I know, because I know the end result and what they're looking for, even though they don't know what it's going to be like at the end of the tunnel, because they're so been in it for so long. Yeah. They don't know what it, but, but I do. Mm -hmm. And I can hold that vibration. I can hold that, that vision for them and help them along, you know, because when you get to the other side, man, everything changes in your life. Everything. I mean, mm -hmm. your relationships to your friends, your partners, to life in itself, looking at a sunset is going to be different. <laughs> looking at enjoying food yes. is going to be different. Like, yeah, everything. It's just going to be more like it's like a, a human experience. Is you're really living the human experience here mm -hmm. on Earth? And it's. I feel like you touch on several really good points. One, it's healing on all levels: mental, physical, emotional, spiritual. You change on a soul level. And with that, your abilities change. Your psychic abilities are enhanced. You are more sure of yourself with your abilities. Everyone has psychic abilities. I've been saying this since day one. It just depends upon what they are and what te techniques you use. But they are amplified once you heal. You open up to so much more downloads from the universe, psychic pings, all of it. And then the other thing that you mentioned is relationships. So as uh, several of my followers know, most of them know because I'm all about transparency. So most of my life is just like out there, the parts that I choose to be out there. Um, I'm single. So now if I look at my dating history and and you have a kid and, and everything, so yours is going to be a little bit different than, than single sister over here. But I look at my dating history throughout the healing process. Who I thought I was going to be with at the beginning of that healing process. I was like, oh my gosh, this is like the best I could possibly get for who I am and the dumpster fire of a human being that I was and everything. And I was so excited and so in love and we trauma bonded 100%. But I, I look at that whole timeline and I look at the beginning and now having healed, I look back. Hey! <laughs> No. Oh my God. That's what the best was. That's what the best was. Oh, no, no more. No, no more. And so when, when I look at that level of healing, as you're saying, it changes relationships. Fuck. It changes who you want to be in a relationship with. It changes what you accept as love from other people. I feel people who have not healed from their original wound, accept and expect less and not by a little bit like a lot bit like bottom of the barrel stand <laughs> level of i have had clients come in and i know you have too i've had clients come in and they're like you know it was just really nice oh it was he took out the trash once he what that's not that I'm sorry, that is the win of the week. Don't get me wrong, celebrate all the little wins. Yay, life. You deserve better. <laughs> you, oh. And you realize it. I could never imagine going back and settling for the relationships that I had, romantic or otherwise. I look at friendships. I look at colleagues and professional relationships. I have, in, in all honesty, almost no one in my life that I had before healing. Everyone just faded into the background. And yeah, social media exists. So like you still follow each other on Facebook, but that's it. Like, I did you find that? I, I still have my parents. I love my parents because they, they actively work on healing also. Like you said, us healing causes our parents to heal. That generational. So both of my parents have healed so much in the past few years one, because I'm healing in that generational thing, but also two, as most of you know, I'm a right bitch. Like I I looked at both my parents and I said, I am on a healing journey and I will either drag you by the hair or you will not come and I will leave you behind. 
And they were like, okay. And so we started healing and we each went our individual healing processes, but they honored that. And they were like, if this is what it takes and their lives are so much better, not because of me, but because of themselves. So I feel like this, as much as your original wound is about you, it's about everybody. And that is so amazing. So how, how do you feel about that with like the relationships and, and everything? Oh yeah. I had my fair share of relationships. Don't get me wrong. You know, <laughs> I have a child, but I, you know, I don't look at it and you know, it's based on how you want to look at the situation. Right. Mm -hmm. I've never looked at him as far as, Oh, I chose the wrong partner or what, you know, I knew that I knew that he was not the one I, I've known from the moment. Yep. I knew um, that he, um, I knew that he was supposed to be the one to give me my child. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I, I always known that I never held anything against it after we broke up. And it was my, I found myself like, like I'm in a great relationship. You know, he was, he's a great father. But yeah. then at the same time, I was like, I'm not happy. There's something missing inside mm -hmm. of me. Mm -hmm. So I left that relationship. It was my choosing and I left. And then, but then later on, I, I recreated that relationship because I wasn't healed yet. Mm -hmm. And I repeated that in several relationships. Mm. And then finally, when I, when I look back healing that wound, I realized the type of person who I was in the relationship, who I was being, and I was being their mother. I was being their mom. And I was done. I did not want to be their mom anymore. I did not want to be that role mom because how strong I was from the karmic wound of being strong. Mm -hmm. I didn't allow anyone else to come in and help or trust anyone because I had my, my barriers so up. So I didn't allow the man to be masculine and come to me and play the masculine role for me because I was in my masculine. So I became their mother. Yes. Yes. And that is something that I feel like a lot of people don't understand. When you are in your masculine, you become mommy. And people are like, oh, but that's very feminine. No, it's not. You do dishes while breastfeeding and vacuuming a floor and balancing a checkbook. You are rocking big dick energy no matter what. And so I feel like people come into our lives for a reason. And you had said like on repeat, on repeat. I want everyone who is watching and everyone who's watching the replay. And if you're watching the replay, please comment that you're watching the replay. Like, be active. Even if we can't answer live, we 100% want you to feel like you are seen and heard. So, obviously, like, we're, we're all for that. Like and follow. And at the end, we'll do our socials to make sure you're following both of us for any more follow-ups or tips that you need. Uh, I believe that you are still open to new clients for 2023. Your schedule is not fully booked yet. And so if you guys want to schedule a session for the original womb with Janice, that is still available. And so I would do it sooner rather than later, simply because, well, why suffer longer than you have to, if we're being honest? Two, when we do things in, in like this time of year, the summer, the energy is moving so fast. And during the cancer season of emotions, why wouldn't you choose to heal an original wound now? And that's one of the reasons why we scheduled this for now was because it's so emotional and it brings so many things up. So we will do all of the links and shout outs at, at the end. I promise there will be plenty of time for you guys to, to interact with us and, and to get opportunities to schedule. But like looking back, you had said, and you repeat and you repeat. So everyone watching, here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about your love life and I want you to think about and we're just doing love life because it's easy, but you can do this with any aspect of your life you want. Dieting also counts and the way you view your body. Yo, yo, like we've all done. How many repeats and repeats and repeats? And here's the thing. I don't even think it's repeat. At this point, Um, for, for those of you too young to understand this, I am so sorry, that's sad. But vinyl records where like you keep hitting that beep, that one skip the cd is skipping so you're not even like repeating the whole song you're just skipping on the word the the, the and you're just like oh and it's not even a good word it's a boring word that's in everyone's fucking sentence the it is not like love ambition success it is the 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 and you're like, oh, okay 
after the fifth time, we're all just like, oh, I hate this. So show of hands, show of likes, show of comments, who is at the I hate this stage? Who is at the I'm ready to heal stage? Are you feeling empowered to heal? And if not, why? I also want you to comment that. Why? And because here's the thing. We have heard it all. We've been around the block. We've been here forever. <laughs> we have dedicated our lives to this, okay? So whatever's holding you back, there are answers out there and we are willing to answer them. So if you have questions, answer. Absolutely. They're here, ready, willing, resources here, waiting. So we'll watch the uh, the comments and see if anything comes up. But yeah, the repeat, it's at nauseum. And I think so for me, yes, Snowfeather Wolf says me. She's tired of the, 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 the. Hey, thank you, Snowfeather Wolf. Before I forget, I sent you a private message that I that I meant to send two months ago. And then I just sent it yesterday because that's when I remembered to send a message. Um, so with with this and with the repeats and with everything that's going on, how has your life changed? I have a story, but I know you have a story. So you you had your spiritual awakening. You trained, you grew, you took three years of immense healing and beauty and power. What's changed? What What's on the other side? Everything. Oh my God. Everything's changed. I have such a deep sense of just trust in myself, mm -hmm. support in myself, that things that I create and manifest, I could just think about them and they happen right in front of me. An answer comes up. Someone comes in and DMs me. Yeah. I, I could, I'd be like, okay, I would like to experience this. And that would happen in, immediately. Um, mm -hmm. Connections with people, like these kinds of things are happening yeah. just organically. Mm -hmm. And it's just unfolding so beautifully. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not in that struggle. Okay, mm -hmm. so when you're in the wound, when you're in the heat of it, you mm -hmm. do feel like you got, you're struggling, like you're fighting. There's this internal constant battle inside of you that is just yes. ripping you up because that's mm -hmm. the unhealed trauma. That goes away when you heal that. So I feel so much at peace. Mm -hmm. I feel like just like I can trust fully, openly that not just everything is going to happen. Like, you know, people say like, oh, things are meant to be. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. You know, you just got to trust. No, it's a real deal. It's happening in the third dimension for mm -hmm. me. Like, it's real. I can yeah. actually feel it, see it, experience it mm -hmm. right now as it's happening. Yes. So with, with manifesting on the other side. So I just got done filming uh, season nine of The Blocks, which will be coming out uh, hopefully in 2024. And it's the biggest entrepreneur live in show in the United States. And I love it. It's, it's life changing. I, I, it is the best thing ever. You have coaches and judges who are multimillionaire empires who are, who are teaching you how to be badasses at business. It is amazing. So I did that and I got back from it, um, a, uh, about a month ago. And one of the things was to restart the life with Lily lives because I had taken a break from it. I got busy. Life happened and all the other excuses because they are excuses. I 100 percent admit I it was an excuse. And that was one of the psychic pings. And look, in less than a month, it was restarted in less than a month. I have an amazing guest in less than a month. And I mean, I posted to a group to find a guest. And I think within what was it like 72 hours or something that we had like connected that this all happened. So when we say it's happening, it happens in a month. I completely pivoted my business in 72 hours. We created this show, this episode all around the original wound. And when I say like we did this in 72 hours, like we obviously have our own stories and our opinions that don't change. But all of this information coming to you, the the birth of this experience happened in that amount of time. That's the turnaround you can see. It is oh, so yes. amazing. Oh my God. Yes, right. I had that same experience. Yes. I went to, so I had I was invited to go to a cacao and sound ceremony yes. two months ago. Yes. And I said no. 
And then my girlfriend comes to me. She goes, um, well, she, the girl who's hosting it is allowing me to bring someone for free. So I want to bring you. Yes. So I was like, okay. So I went in that ceremony, that same exact ceremony. I got downloaded what I needed to create as far as a new offering. And what it was is like, so I also use tuning forks. Mm -hmm. So, um, so what it was is like, I need to help people go into their mother's womb to the moment that they're conceived to break any of the limits and blocks from there yes for you came incarnated in this lifetime and clearing your whole birth while you were in your mother's womb yes so the moment you were born now currently healing this inner child embracing your inner child and it's like been so profound i've been getting so much clients mm -hmm. just booking that session and so much transformation even my own son Mm -hmm. did that same because he yeah. had his karmic wound was with his father yes so i helped my son get over his karmic mm -hmm. wound with his father that just on his birthday two days mm -hmm. ago he said that his dad reached out and said i'm sorry for ever hurting you and if you yeah. can forgive me my son got the apology that he's always wanted on his yes. birthday from after doing these sessions i was like oh my Yes, it so it not only changes you, it changes the energy around you and opens things up. And me and your son share a birthday, so only fabulous oh. people are born during this time. <laughs> but so it's it is it's it's amazing. And once you start healing, you see subtle changes. But once you're on the other side, I mean, your life is completely different. And when you say like the original wound, something that I don't I don't think I've ever talked about this publicly. So uh, my mom had me and her water broke in her second trimester. And so they actually had to go and like seal her up, you know, reseal her water and, and everything. Um, and so like my, my pregnancy, me being created was very traumatic. But then when she actually went into labor, there was no doctor. And when the doctor came, he was really awful. And she had a very traumatic birth with me. And I can say for a fact, my soul knows this. I have done the work and stuff, but that is how intense the mother wound is. Like it was in the womb that I started taking responsibility for my mother. So when I was born, literally born, I was seconds old. I was so pissed off that that doctor hurt my mother, I exploded the placenta on him. So he was covered in goo. And my mom says, I was, from that moment, I was proud of you. Like, that was the best thing ever. I gave birth to you and your first act in existence was just fuck her. Fuck you. <laughs> and so it's, but, and that's awesome. And yes, I will, as most of you know, I, I'd kill for my mama. Like I love my mother. Oh, yeah. But that responsibility of that wound immediately imprinting on me that I need to protect my mother as someone who is minutes old is real. And my mother didn't do it. This, while it's the original mother wound, it's not like she threw me in a frying pan. I was just born and then it happened. So sometimes this can happen from like trauma and having really shitty people in your life, but it can just happen as an ancestral thing that imprints on you when you're conceived. And so it's so beautiful to have it work through and see it and move through it. And I have an amazing relationship with my mother now. I am still obviously very protective of her, but that is because she has done so much for me. Both of my parents have. And I can't. I can't imagine what my life would be like if I hadn't have healed my mother wound. Like everything changes and shifts. And I want to, I want to give a warning and this one's going to sound really weird, but I want everyone just to be patient and open to hearing this. It can fuck you up. Here's the thing. If you are so used to, cause I healed, I healed my first encounter with a healthy relationship fucked me up. I, my mind, 
I was so anxious and terrified all the time. And like this, something that I talked about in therapy and did Reiki and stuff. And it literally was a therapist. Yes, Snow Feather Wolf, there is a cat co-host. Thank you for pointing out. <laughs> cat with the attitude today. Um, but no, like it was something and and I had talked about it, it with with my therapist. And they said, this is a normal person problem. And I was like, this isn't trauma. This isn't a, a, a anxiety. This isn't PTSD. This, and she's like, no, this is normal. And I lost my goddamn mind because it was normal and healthy and supportive. And because I was so used to trauma and abuse and negativity and the, 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 I didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. Let me be clear. This is not bad. It'll fuck up your head. It'll be the craziest mind fuck you've ever had. But it's not bad. I promise. It just seems it'll be so surreal. You'll be like, things go bad though. What? 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 It's fine. And that is just, I want you guys to be open to that. This is not a cautionary tale. This is not don't do this. This is just be aware that as you heal, you will have some of the best situations ever and you are so used to asking for less. You are so used to being hurt that you can't wrap your head around being treated well. That's not a bad thing. Just smile. Just be like, oh, this is new. This is new. Treat it like eating something new. It's a new texture. It's a new flavor. You don't know if you like it or you hate it and that's fine. You can spit it out if you don't like it, but it may be awesome. I am a super picky eater. I never thought I would like Caesar salads. I never thought I would like cucumbers. I did not eat them until way past I was 18. Like I was an adult before I ate those two things. I love them. I eat them so much. I refuse to eat cherries for years because I was like, no, I'm not going to like them. I love cherries. I ate cherries for breakfast. Like, just be aware. Just because it's new don't mean it's bad. It just means it's new. Uh, Christina, uh, who has a lovely Seeking a Thousand Sons podcast says, uncomfortable not knowing what to expect when you knew what to expect before. Yes, it is surreal to have these new experiences, but instead of, so what I want, what I do is food, because as most of you know, I, I love food. I, I am very much a food human like you want to make me happy slip me some chocolate or like fruit or or something french fries i have people at events come up and give me food and i'm just like thank you and everyone's like why and i'm like because i am so vocal about my deep love of munching on stuff that is just fabulous so with with what christine is saying so i i attribute it to food what what do you attribute it to like with with dealing with these new experiences how should someone look at it? I view it as like try, trying to eat new food. You may not like it, but you may like it. It may be your Caesar salad. For me, I look at it as an experience, like living a whole different experience. Because in for me, I had trouble with receiving, opening up to receiving support. Because that was my karmic wound for my mom, not feeling supported by her. So for me, in order to unlearn that, I needed to open up and receive. And there was people who always wanted to give me things. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. I felt really bad. I felt like guilty or I, oh, no, I, couldn't. I just oh, couldn't. Oh, no, 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 no. Right. It's too much. Oh, my God. But now I'm going to give it. Bring it. I now have people sending me gifts mm -hmm. and just out of nowhere, like, cards like mm -hmm. thank you so i couldn't even accept a little like compliment oh you have a really nice uh, outfit i couldn't even accept compliments oh. before wow and now wow. i can accept all forms it just, it's all about me receiving what however it's gonna come in if it's yes. form of money if it's a form of things if it's a form of compliments if it's shown of affection or you know gestures or anything i just have to be you know, yeah, you're open. You're yeah. after you heal, you are open. You are open to new relationships. You're open to gifts. You're open to praise. So I grew up like most women in this society. Let's be honest. Society is ugly. Looks matter. And I look like this. I am not stupid. I'm well aware that I am pretty. Both of my parents are gorgeous. I won the genetic lottery. 
And like, but you couldn't, if someone said, oh my God, you're so pretty. You're like, oh no, I feel so fat today. Like, that's what you had to say. You couldn't, now when people say that, as most of you have seen me out in public, don't I know it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Look at these boots. And I'll like lift up my foot because I'm wearing cute shoes. And, and it's, when you heal, everyone heals differently. So as most of you know, and for those of you who don't know me, you can tell by watching this, I am loud. I am outrageous. I am in your face. I am usually irreverent. And that is me and my authentic self. And I honor that. But when you heal, it's not saying, oh, this is what you're going to become. You're going to become you. And me just happens to be a living cartoon character, which makes me so happy because I am basically like my... One of my nifflings tell, told me, one of my tiny humans was like, you're the second Wonder Woman. And I'm like, I could die happy. Like that is that is where my branding comes from, is from comic books and superheroes. I love that, that type of energy. Tweety Bird, Mickey Mouse, bring it on. I love it. And so it's really embracing who you are. So I want to talk about how- I love that you are like that. I could, I love being around friends that are authentic because you know what? There's no guessing of what they're thinking. There's no, no. guessing if they like you or not. You take me like they're fully honest. So you can be completely oh, yeah. transparent and fully expressive. And I love it. I, yeah. And it helps, people. <laughs> it helps others because people are like, you are so authentic. It makes me feel safe to be authentic. I'm all like, good. Stand good. inside my bubble. Ain't no one going right. to fuck with you in here because right. I am louder than them. But it's also, so we have comments of, that's why I love you. And you're also comedic. Thank you so much. Um, but it's, so healing is a journey. So I was on season five of The Blocks, which filmed at the very end of August. And then I just got back. Uh, it was at the beginning of June for um, the season nine filming of The Blocks. Just in that time, the entire production team told me how much I had changed and I had already like healed and everything like that. But healing is, if you think you've made it, you haven't, it just keeps getting better. If you so, got a body, you ain't done. <laughs> yes. Yes. And so like in season five, I actually intentionally didn't use any of my gifts. I turned them, I dimmed them all the way down. And my reasoning was, is that it's unfair. I had, an unfair advantage over the other contestants in the show. This is a business thing. My psychic abilities don't involve my business. <laughs> That's a bunch of bullshit. I pull tarot cards before I partner with somebody. And so, and I, I, I did well, but I struggled and I didn't quite feel like I was getting my message across and, and everything like that. I loved it. It was a life-changing experience. I went back for season nine. And before I went, I turned it up all the way to be so hyper-focused. I literally did three times as much work in heels. We film for 18 hours a day. You are on for 18 hours a day. And I killed it. I did readings and astrology and tarot and mediumship for many of the people there while also competing in an entrepreneur competition, while also making personal connections with people, while also taking care of the production team because I psychically connected with the production team. So I was checking on them for their water, their bathroom breaks, everything. That really being in your authentic self, really healing changes you. And once you accept that, once you're willing to live through that, it it blows your mind how much better your life can be and what you can attract in. Now, I want to say this before we end, and I want to know your, your views on it too. Healing is awesome. It will attract so much. Raise your psychic abilities 100%. You still have to do the work. So just because you heal from your wound... If you sit there with your hands up, like Santa's going to take a dump into your lap of everything you ever wanted, that is crap. It is not real. So while healing is amazing and you will attract so much in, you still have to do the work. You want to know how we we got we got this going is that I messaged in a podcast um, Facebook group and I was like, I, this is what I want to talk about. Who Who's 
who's got it. So I had to take that action step. We didn't just randomly meet each other, Hawaii and Minnesota. We didn't. And then once I did that, once I took that action step, you took the action step to personally DM me, not comment. Yeah, fine. I'm interested. Whatever. You were like, I want to work with you. What can we do to make this happen? Let's do it. Like you took initiative. We both took action steps to create and manifest and attract this awesomeness. So that's what I want you guys to remember is that this is not Santa. This is not unicorn ship shitting rainbows. This is you. This is your power. And if you're willing to get it, it is fucking there for you. So we take action steps. If people are like, oh my God, I wish I was more like you. Why wouldn't you? We are fabulous. I mean, look at us living the best life. <laughs> take the steps. Take the steps. Schedule the sessions. Do what you need to do. How how do you feel about this? Like, do you agree, disagree? Is it more oh, about attracting? Totally or agree. Action? Totally agree. I spent most of my spiritual training sitting in a meditation chair for hours. Hours. And then I I then I left the, the, my training and I, I knew something was missing. What was missing is my body. My body was pissed. It was not, it was so freaking pissed because I spent so many times that, yeah, okay clairvoyance is great i can see shit that's amazing but yeah. when you're not using it in your body and you're anchoring it and embodying it in your body taking the action steps doing what you need to do yeah. in the physical body you ain't gonna do shit you ain't gonna go nowhere and you're yeah. just gonna be on a repeat recycle you're gonna be on the healing journey way 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 longer so what i learned through this is that you have to incorporate both you mm -hmm. have to incorporate the spiritual reality, the spiritual world mm -hmm. into the physical reality. Because we live here in the physical reality. We live here on Mother Earth. We got to pay bills. We mm -hmm. got, we have other people that live here. Mm -hmm. So we are humans. Yes. It does not deny a lot of times in spirituality I find is that it's just spiritual and no human. And it's like, no, we are humans living in an, in an experience. Humans is a light body. Light beings that's what yes. human is yes you know? so we need to embrace that yes you have to incorporate the human experience into your spiritual existence yep or else you're not doing it right i am not so once you transcend once you die and become a ball of light or reincarnate or whatever like that's great then you are a soul but right now you are in a vessel and your vessel matters and your vessel counts and you are on earth, which means as much as we can ascend and raise our vibration and break certain human rules and laws like to attract more, it's, it's awesome. We can bend space and time if we really want to. You are still human and you need to honor that part of it. And being human, because there are too many people, as I talk about in all of my manifesting, there is no Santa. If you want and hope and try, no. If you are sitting there waiting for it to be dropped into your lap, no. Yep. You need to go right. and get it somehow, however that looks to you. Because I have met so many people who have failed at what they are doing, no matter what it is, business, love life, healing, career, anything. Because they're like, well, I just, they did what, what we all do. I meditated for two hours today in total silence. Oh my God. I journaled and, and then nothing happened. And, and I, I did affirmations. I rubbed, <laughs> crystals, I rubbed crystals while taking a bath underneath the full moon and <laughs> nothing happened. Okay. Now let me be clear about this shit. Everything that we just mentioned is awesome. And it is the sprinkles. It is the awesome sprinkles that you put on to enhance the Sunday of your life. You know, the way that I put it is we are spiritual. We have our spiritual karma contract. We have multiple lifetimes. But when we get a body, this mm -hmm. is where all the family shit happens. It's yes. in this physical body because of the DNA. We're in the womb with our mom. So we got to deal with that human stuff. Yes. It's in the body stuff, the emotions that yes. it's not just thoughts. You can't just change your mindset only and just think you're oh, you're all good because I changed my mind. No, that mindset comes with an emotion. It comes with energy that mm -hmm. is created through that yep. emotion and that thought. So what is the energy yep. behind that? 
So you can sit there and you can do all of that. You know, you can meditate. If you're a, like, let's say you're a monk and you're on top of a mountain and meditate, okay, you have no thought. You clear all that because you have time. But we live in a world where there is internet, there is kids, there is jobs, there is people. We're, we're not that. Mm -hmm. We're not that. We live a busy life. So we need to have, yes. these are just tools, mm -hmm. just tools to help you along the journey. But you're still going to have to take the action to, you can read all the books that you want. You can go yes. and go to every seminar that you want. But if you're not taking anything from that and applying it to your life, yep, then it's nothing. You, know? you have to apply the substance and the actual action steps. So as you say, like it changes your energy. Okay. So you meditate and you change your mindset. Remember just the sprinkles, but you don't change the words that you say to your mother. You are just gonna, the, 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 again, period. I, there's no way. If you come and a unicorn shits a rainbow for you, great. You are the exception, but that is not how it works for the rest of us. Oh no. It's, you have to do something with it. And that is what I get. I love to empower my clients to take action. It's like, what are you going to do with this? We do journal prompts. We do meditation. We do intentions. We do crystals. We do all that stuff to enhance the action in which they are taking. And so I want all of you to remember that the meat of what you're doing, the ice cream of the Sunday, is what you should be focusing on. For the love of God, everyone has enough sprinkles. Now. Here is the question. Here is the shameless plugs of the day. But I don't know what my ice cream, what my meat should be. You see these two lovely people here who have been talking for the last hour? We do. We are capable of learning with you, of helping you, of pointing you in the right direction for self-discovery. So can you say your social media handles, your email, can you give everyone a way to contact you so that when they want to schedule a session, they can take it away? Thank you. Okay. So um, you can follow me on Facebook, Janice Recolon. I do have a business page, which is I'm the Kahuna Wisdom Keeper. You can follow me there. You can also reach out to me in Messenger. I have an Instagram of Janice Ululani. I have a wonderful group. Um, it's called Unapologetically You. You come in and we can, you know, dive in deeper, get to know each other, see, um, nail down what is working and not working for you. I also do have a 45-minute call um, that will help you narrow down, just like what Lily was saying. I don't know what it is. I don't know what that is. Well, that the first thing you got to do make that step and we got you that we we will take you to the next step all you got to do is commit to yourself first and we got you in the next step so those are all the places that you can get a hold of me i also have an um a link tree account mm -hmm. that has all of my offerings that's on top of there as well perfect i love it and as we said she still has availabilities for this year and so that'll be something you would want to do in my opinion sooner rather than later because why prolong your own suffering is my opinion so and as all of you know i am lily of the light my name is lily mcnamara and i do these lives i'm going to be doing them more often and you guys can reach out to me through here you're obviously all watching on the lily of the light page TikTok, Instagram, everything is the same name out of sheer laziness, not going to lie. And so it's all Lily of the Light. And let me know what you guys want to see next or want to see more of because we are incredibly accommodating and we want to make sure that you guys are taking care of yourselves. Janice, thank you so much for coming and sharing all of your wisdom and knowledge and sassiness on this really complicated topic that I feel so many people avoid because it goes too deep. And as you know, as we believe, there is no such thing as too deep. We want to get to the root of the problem to help you heal as quickly as possible. And I think that we are the practitioners to do it. So remember that you can schedule with either of us. If you have questions, you can follow us on social media. Remember to like, remember to share. Please get the word out about this because if you resonated with it, chances are people you know will too. And we are more than happy to help with anyone. Neither of us discriminates against any walk of life. We are both incredibly open and welcoming. We we love marginalized people. So if, if you're wondering if it's going to be safe and supportive, we will 
totally have that be be a part of every session that we do. I know that we're both dedicated to it. So thank you once again for doing this. Thank you everyone for joining us. We are going to sign off. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.